located on the shores of Lake Michigan, the city of Kenosha is now looking to redevelop one of its most famous landmarks dating back to the early 1900s. Most recently home to Chrysler Motors engine plant, the site once housed the Thomas Jeffrey Company, one of the first automobile manufacturers to use an assembly line, and later became American Motors and finally Daimler Chrysler. As a manufacturing facility, it, it had been through a number of evolutions over its nearly a hundred year history of manufacturing on the site. And uh, moving it forward, there are plans to um, extend roadways in, in, into this hundred acres and uh, add new, new development. At the height of production, the plant spanning 107 acres supported over 16,000 jobs in the area. The economic downturn and Chrysler's financial woes led to the plant shutting down operations in 2010, and the property was turned over to the city of Kenosha. I've been involved with this site since about 2010. Uh, though I wasn't mayor at the time, the city brought me back in to help with the redevelopment and actually uh, getting a hold of the property, cleaning up the property and that aspect of it. Uh, since I had a background in that um, over the previous uh, 16 years, as mayor with the lakefront and a number of other brownfield sites throughout the city. The mayor kind of had that vision of what the site was going to be, so it kind of led us to the remedial efforts. So we started with really feeling that we're going to get the site back and get those jobs back onto the site. With big plans for the redevelopment of the site as an innovation neighborhood, Mayor Antaramian looks forward to the site transforming into an innovation center, a charter school for science, tech, and engineering, 3,700 residential related properties, retail and green spaces, along with additional street access points. I believe this site will create a huge amount of growth in the community. It's targeted to young people who wish to come in and start their own companies. It's targeted to education. It's targeted to uh, training. All those things will be a huge plus to the community. AECOM a leading global environmental consulting firm has worked with the city to develop an effective plan to remediate chlorinated volatile organic compounds at the site, allowing for the redevelopment to move forward. Chrysler announced uh, their bankruptcy in 2009 and the, the city realized at that time that they needed to be an integral part of what happened to the, the property and uh, as a result they hired AECOM and I've been working on this project since that time. The city and AECOM evaluated a range of treatment options, but due to the large size and scope of the project, believed that an in-situ approach was the most cost-effective. As part of a pay-for-performance contract with Regenesis, the team designed a combined remedy of sorption-enhanced reductive dechlorination, or ERD, and in-situ chemical reduction, or ISCR solution. So this project has been years in the making. We started out by getting data from AECOM, and we came out and did a pilot test ourselves to see if we could inject. We collected cores, we collected data. We took that all back to the office, crunched the numbers, came up with our design strategy, and now we're out here with two crews injecting in multiple different areas. There are four treatment areas on the site. Treatment Area 1 indicated natural attenuation was occurring and would benefit from a boost using an ERD ISCAR approach. Areas 2, 3, and 4 would incorporate strategic use of plume stop to create ERD ISCAR zones that were close to sensitive receptors as well as inaccessible areas underneath rail infrastructure. So in this area, we've, uh, we're installing two barriers on each side of the train tracks behind me. We're kind of combining the barrier and grid applications to ensure we get total coverage in this area. We're using uh, temporary wells at two, six, and 10 feet intervals uh, to make sure we're getting our proper distribution. The site design is really a hybrid. We're looking to do um, kind of grid treatments around some of the source areas, and then the larger, broader with plume, we're doing more of a PRV or permanent reactive barrier um, type approach. This allows us to be very efficient and use the groundwater flow um, direction in our advantage. Regenesis amendments included the use of Plume Stop, a groundwater remediation technology designed to rapidly remove and permanently degrade groundwater contaminants like the chlorinated solvents found on the site. 
Uh, cost is always something we have to consider, uh, but we also wanted to make sure it worked and uh, it seemed like the plume stopped at the cost and the effectiveness was our best option. Following the application event, three of the four target areas have already met remedial goals surpassing the original target goals set for the project. Additionally, the groundwater withdrawal systems have been removed. We have a will to make sure that young people will have an opportunity for the future. And I think that is going to be the key for Kenosha. To learn more about this and other successful projects, visit www.regenesis.com.